Hello everyone, my name is Jyotish Kumar. I'm a third year PhD student at the University of Texas El Paso. And if you are a final year master's student or a third year or fourth year undergrad looking for a PhD position in the US, this video is for you. So I'll divide this video in nine parts and I already made them in the sticky note in order to cover all the points I'm gonna explain. The first thing is uh, introducing about a PhD program, introduction of a PhD program. And a PhD program is a five or six year program depending upon your institute or your university. And it's a long journey. So before you choose a PhD program, you have to understand the requirements. You need to understand the expectations of you working in the lab and everything else, okay? So the first thing we'll see is what are the requirements or eligibility in order to apply for a PhD program. So PhD program is a doctorate degree and you need a bachelor's or a master's in order to start a PhD program. That's the academic qualification you require. So in India, we have three years, India, Nepal, Pakistan, or Bangladesh. We, need, we have like in most of the Asian countries, we have three year undergraduate programs which is bachelor's, okay? And you need a master's, which is three plus five in order to start a PhD in the US. While in US, they have four year undergraduate program. So I know many of the US students who can start PhD right after they graduate with their bachelor's. So you need a bachelor's and master's in order to uh, start a PhD program in the US if you're from India or any Asian countries. So the uh, other, so next part is re, uh, researching about the programs and the professors. So at the end of your bachelor's or master, you need to understand what is your field of research you want to work with when you are doing a PhD. So at some point you need to decide that this is my research field and this is the uh, field I'm gonna work with in the next few years of my academic journey. So I choose to work in neurodegeneration, which is a huge field of research. There are people who work in cancer biology, who works in molecular biology, evolutionary biology, developmental biology, or maybe in organic, in organic or different areas of chemistry as well. So at some point you need to choose that this is the field I'm gonna work with, and then the rest will start after that. So you need to be very specific about the area you want to work with. At least you have a general idea of what you want to work for your research in your PhD. And you have to choose the programs and professor based on that. So once you finalize your area of interest or research interest, you need to email professors. You need to look for the professors and PhD programs they offer in different universities and research institutions. So you have to make a list of those universities or research programs they offer a PhD in the same area of interest you want to work with. The next step would be contacting professors and cold emailing them. So contacting professors of your area of research. So how will you find professors who work in the similar field is very easy and most difficult part because you don't know there are many labs, many professors, working over there so you just type your area of interest in in PubMed or any uh, research search and you will find a lot of papers once you find the paper read about the name of the corresponding author author and email them try to see which institution they belong whether do they offer a PhD program or not if yes try to read that paper make some questions and email them that won't be a cold email because you already know their field of research, already know what they are working with because you already have gone through some of the research papers they have published. You write a very nice email framing in a respected manner that you are interested in doing a PhD or maybe you can ask them questions related to the same paper or the experiments they have performed, results, analysis or anything else. So it's best if you start early and make a very good connection, long-term connection before you ask them for a PhD position. Because if you do that, there's a, there's a sense of seriousness they see in you that you really want to work with them and you have a research interest persistent for a long time. So I was definitely uh, doing that when I was doing my masters that I used to email 
professors of my area of interest from all over the world from germany from the other parts of europe us and canada to understand about what they are doing in their lab can i match some of the questions they might expect people to ask them and they used to reply back because if you ask genuine questions they they'll be happy to answer the questions which is asked related to their field so so most of the people they answer if you email them from uh, their research papers you know to ask them questions and then asking for a phd position even they do not have they might reply you after some time even they have funds or at least you have a point of contact you can you know move forward with next to that is having your application package ready so what is the application package it contains five to six things first thing your sop which is statement of purpose you need a very organized statement of purpose of what was what was your academic achievements what is the story of your academic uh, progress during your life your sop should not be too much personal and more of the academic journey you have gone through the other thing is cv you have to make your cv look good professional not too many colors but more of your academic achievements internship and any project you have done related to the same field it would be very good match to understand the story of your academic journey the other thing would be letter of recommendation to get good recommendation letters you need to have good relations with your bachelor's and master's professor so i would definitely suggest if you want to do research you had you you need a good relation and you have to show your you have research interest in or like you know you want to work in future in labs and you want to do a phd so if you have that they will definitely provide you good like recommendation letters and uh, as i remember my professor would really love to like write recommendation letter for me so if you show research interest ask questions in their class they will definitely provide you good recommendation recommendation letters which enable you to you know uh, crack a phd program in the us the next thing is uh, your english uh, proficiency test if you uh, if your phd program needs ielts or uh, uh, tofl scores you need those scores beforehand in order to apply for phd program so better you do all those things before the second year so that when the time comes you are ready to apply for phd programs you know the other thing was is your transcript you get your transcript from bachelors and masters you have to contact your university beforehand in order to get those transcripts and you need transcripts to apply for us universities for a phd program so you have to uh, have those transcripts ready before you apply for uh, phd application timeline you need a, uh, you definitely make a excel sheet Uh, about the programs you want to apply for i used to make a list of excel uh, sheets in order to understand what is the deadline of the program what are the requirements they need what is the application fee whether they are free to apply or you need application fee to apply to those universities also i used to write the names of the professor in the university i want to join in future if i get like offered a phd program So these are the things you need to be very specific about and you need to be serious about those things if you want to join a phd you should be very careful and very selective about those labs you want to work with in the same area of research field the next thing would be funding and assistance so if you want to work uh, in lab uh, even for your phd you need funds you need uh, salary to survive in the us it would be a very foolish idea to come to the us until you are very rich to start a phd program because it's expensive so so that's the uh, other thing if you get a phd program make sure you have enough funding your professor or your mentor has enough funding so that they can support you during the phd period for your research also to your salary if they can provide you ra if you are provided with ra you don't have to do a teaching assistantship which is teaching undergraduate labs in order to get salary so that would be a great thing if your research uh, advisor provides you rsc but i wouldn't ask for a rsc before i get admitted into phd program so the best thing would be get used to the professor first get into their program and then ask for rsc if you deserve they will definitely provide you rsc in order to work 
more hours in the lab and not getting into TSA. The other thing would be mistakes. There are a lot of mistakes you can do at each step. And to prevent those mistakes, you have to be very careful while choosing the labs. It could be a mistake from your end or the university and your uh, application will be rejected. So the first mistake they do is while cold emailing. Do not email random people for asking for PhD position. Know your value, understand your research area and apply to specific professors who are working in your research interest. Okay, You should not email everyone and gen writing generalized email from chat GPT or uh, anything that you know offend people. So <clears throat> professors or uh, advisors they are not free enough to look at the emails hundreds of emails they receive from all international students so write a catchy subject so they so that you are genuinely interested to work in their lab read their research papers before emailing them and not cold emailing them like uh, usual because they they will not gonna read your email will not gonna see your cv or until you you know so a specific interest to work in their lab and what you can contribute to your lab the most mistake people do is they saw their own area of research but i being a professor i'm not interested in what you have done in your labs before but i would be more interested to understand that what you want to contribute whatever projects i am doing in the lab so it's basically you how you be a good fit to my lab rather than I'm more interested in your research work, okay? So in mostly undergrad or masters, they do basic research to understand about the techniques and other things, but the core research is what professors have the projects with. So you better sound more trying to be, you know, a uh, fit to their group than showing your research, whatever you have done. So it's basically that what mistakes they do. They self explain more than what, you know, professors expect them to uh, understand about their projects. The other mistake they do is uh, apply to thousands of places without good preparation. I would say apply to limited places, 10 or 20 to the best programs because each program is expensive in their application forms. So it would be like 80 to 85 dollars, maybe 90 in order to apply for a good schools, okay, for a PhD program. So you need to be very selective where you apply because you don't want to lose too much money just for applying to PhD programs. The other mistake they do is apply to all top schools. Like I apply to MIT, Harvard and top schools, but also apply to some of the basic or average schools or medium schools where the chances of admission or chances of acceptance is very high. So I definitely got rejections from MIT, which is not very surprising, but I also apply to medium schools like uh, University of Texas, applied to Germany, EMBL and all the programs which are free. So there's a lot of application, uh, a PhD application which are free and you don't have to pay anything. So I would definitely uh, apply for everything which is free. Okay. But I would focus more on the applications which are paid and of my area of research. So definitely have a thought about what are the places you are applying for. Other mistake they do is they ask professor beforehand whether they have funding or other things or not, which is more irrelevant before you, you know, so more interest in their research work and so. So yeah, don't ask too much questions regarding, uh, you know, funding and all. The third uh, thing is being unprofessional and not giving space for professors to answer. So you should not ask or email them very randomly and frequently asking for PhD positions. So show some respect to them and try not to be, uh, you know, unprofessional while writing those emails. Learn how to talk to professors, how to write email professionally. If you don't watch videos or uh, watch blogs, how people write uh, professional, polite email asking for PhD position. You have to learn those behaviors in order to fit into a PhD program because uh, these are very selective. Only few people get into PhD programs in the US and now it's becoming harder and harder. So I would definitely recommend to follow all those steps I have uh, said or suggested before you go and apply for a PhD programs, have everything ready, keep good relations with professor, start emailing them from now because 
uh, sooner is better and before you get to know to the program and the professor it's good for you and you feel confident to apply to those phd programs so with this all this is uh, this is everything i wanted to say about how you apply for a phd program thank you so much for watching this video and all the best